How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you all how to do this problem where you have a block that's falling onto a spring. Okay. Um, this is a, a free response problem and uh, this is a very good problem for your, any of your general physics, AP physics uh, classes. Okay, so a two, two, to a two kilogram block is dropped from a height of 0.45 meters above an uncompressed spring is shown. The spring falls onto a spring that has a constant of 200 newton meters and this spring is a perfect spring. Mass and are negligible. A is determine the speed of the block the instant it hits the end of the spring. So pretty much how fast is this object going right before it hits that block. So how fast is this block going to go? Well obviously we know this block has um, potential energy at the very very top and as it falls it gains kinetic. So if I know the vertical displacement that it falls I can find out how much kinetic energy it has. So for A Simply all I have to do is just set my uh, potential equal to kinetic. Because the block only has kinetic energy, I'm stating that this is the zero spot. Okay, so pretty much just how long, how fast will this block be going in 0.45 meters. So you know potential energy is just mass times gravity times height. Kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared all over 2. And then you can do a little bit of arithmetic and you see that the masses will cancel out right there. And that leaves you with this. The square root of 2 times gravity times height will be that velocity. And plugging in those numbers, you get 2 times 10. I'm going to use uh, g as 10. That's 10 meters per second squared. It makes calculations a little bit easier. And the height is 0 0.45. And that velocity is 3 meters per second. So when you type that into the calculator, you'll get 3 meters per second. That means this block is going 3 meters per second right before it hits this spring. B is determine the force on the spring when the block reaches its equilibrium position. So pretty much all you can think about it is this block hits the spring and it kind of oscillates back and forward and once it reaches its equilibrium position with the block on it, um, we can pretty much assume this. Now you have your mass that's sitting on this spring, okay, and it has compressed the spring, okay, and the only thing that's pulling down on this is the object's mass times gravity. So this block's mass times gravity. But in order for our acceleration to equal zero, and that's what equilibrium means, so equilibrium position means um, um, all the forces are pretty much equal, per se, um, in this situation, even though it could be still moving. That's for a little, little later discussion. Um, there has to be something that's equal and opposite to this. And that's actually what we call the force of the spring. The force of the spring is pushing up on that block. And we know that the force of a spring is just Hooke's law, negative kx. And you know that the mg is just equal to our weight. So what's interesting is the force on the spring is directly equal to the weight at this situation. So um, I don't know really how much it's compressed per se, but I do know how much force is being applied to the spring, just mass times gravity. So that will actually be, the force being applied will just be 2 times 10, so 20 newtons. So that's how much force is being applied to the spring at equilibrium position. C is determine the distance the, the, uh, the spring is compressed at equilibrium position. So now we're going to kind of take a play on this. So we know that uh, the force on the spring is equal to negative kx. And we know that the force on the spring, we can actually write this like that, it's just 20 newtons, and we know K is 200, and I'm going to uh, disregard the negative. It's just talking about the direction. Remember, a spring is always resist being compressed or stretched. That's why you have a negative in Hooke's Law. And all you have to do now is solve for that X. So you have 20 over 200, and that gives you our displacement of our spring, and that's roughly 0.1 meters. A lot of my kids mess this up sometimes. Please note. I'm going to box these in. Um, that when you do this, you're going to get what you get for the spring constant. Notice that this was newtons per centimeter, then this number would be, or this uh, displacement would be centimeters, okay? But it's meters, so in this case, that's a meter. All right, D, okay? D is determine the speed of the block at equilibrium position. So I want you to think about this. Now, this block is moving down at three meters per second, and as it falls, it's going to pass through equilibrium position, okay? It will pass through it. But we now know that equilibrium position is after this block has fallen 0.45 meters plus it falls an extra 0.1 meters to where the spring is compressed. 
So this will be the block sitting on that compressed spring. So the question is, how fast is this block moving at this given point? Now obviously it has to be moving downwards, okay? Because the block's going to fall through equilibrium position, come to a complete stop, and come right back up, okay? So we need to find what that velocity is. Now, we're going to do it very similar to the part A. So at the very, very top of this, this object does have potential energy. So we do have potential energy. And as it falls, it's actually at equilibrium position, it is actually displaced um, the spring. Okay, so we are actually giving energy into the spring. So we call that potential energy of the spring. So you are compressing the spring some as it has fallen. And obviously the block is still moving, so it still has kinetic energy. Okay, so the block has fallen, you know, point, uh, point 0.1 meters of potential. That's how far it's fallen. And all of a sudden right here, it starts to compress the spring. Um, and then all of a sudden we can solve for that. So watch this. So you have mgh is equal to one half kx squared plus mv squared all over two. And that's the velocity we are wanting to solve for. Okay, so we can actually multiply both sides by two and you get two mgh equals kx squared plus um, oops, v squared times, uh, yeah, m. Okay, so that just got rid of those twos, and then I can pretty much have this 2mgh minus kx squared divided by m will give me that velocity. So that would be giving me how fast that object is doing. Example, I'm solving this algebraically. You don't have to. Um, I, I teach my students to. That way it makes life a lot easier. Okay, and you can actually simplify this a little bit more, actually, if you want to. This would be 2 g h minus k x squared over m okay and that's going to you know tell me how fast this spring is going so then you plug in all your numbers so that equals 2 times 10 and the height the height is how far this block has fallen please note it fell 0.45 meters and then it fell an extra 0.1 meters so that's 0 0.55 okay minus 200 times how much was that spring compressed that spring was compressed 0.1 meters okay and that's going to be over the mass of that block two and typing all that into my calculator real quick what does that give you uh that's just 200 times by one squared divide that by two that's one so 20 times 0.55 so, so it's pretty much the square root of 10 so this gives me the square root of 10, which is equal to 3.16 meters per second. And that's actually the correct answer in the document. So this block will be moving at 3.16 meters as it passes through equilibrium position. And finally, E, I'm going to try to write E up here, sorry. E is the simple one. E is, the, what's the speed of the block at maximum displacement? So as this block totally compresses this spring, and that's going to be very simple because if you think about it, as the block compresses the spring at maximum displacement, the block is going to stop. So this is going to be zero meters per second. So the block is going to stop momentarily before it's driven back upwards by the force of the or by the force or the or the energy inside the spring. Okay, so I hope this uh, video helped. If so, please give me a like, uh, a like, and a subscribe for more physics content. Um, thank you all. Have a great day.